Thank you. It's a great honor to, to be here and to share in this session that I didn't really know that I was going to till a few minutes ago. But fortunately, I know very well the, the speakers, and, and it's really a great pleasure to, to introduce all of them. And first of all, it's going to be Maria Gracia Spilantini from the University of Cambridge, and she works at the Clinical Neuroscience Department, and she's a fellow of the Royal Society. And she has made uh, very important contributions to the pathological role of synuclein and of tau, and in particularly in, in vivo, in mouse models, but also in vitro. And I think she's going to present today about synuclein, so welcome. So thank you very much for the very kind invitation, Miguel and Jesus, but also the organizer. is a beautiful place to be, and uh, um, I'm really honored. And what I would like to talk, because it's a, a time of anniversary, uh, I would like to talk, instead of tau, as I had initially planned, uh, I would like to talk about alpha synuclein. And then, uh, because you see in Parkinson's disease, this is an important year, are 200 years from when Parkinson described Parkinson's disease as uh, shaking palsy, 50 years when Cotzias used for the first time high doses of dopamine to treat patients successfully, and finally, are 20 years that we described alpha synuclein. So I would like briefly to tell you some history, how we end up doing that, and then where we are now, what we think are the possible toxic mechanism of the protein. So um, when I was doing my PhD a long time ago, uh, I was working in the laboratory with Michelle Godert and, uh, and then Ross Jakes was uh, a technician in the laboratory, expert in biochemistry. And then we were mainly working on tau and tried to identify post-translational modification of tau and to raise antibodies against tau protein. So we were taking extract from the human brain, inject mice, and then... Or, um, use mice or rabbits, and then it characterized the antibody that we were obtaining. But one of these antibodies recognized not only tau, but these two bands in the blood. And so as a side project with Ross and Michelle, we decided to start to look what actually these two bands were. And then we, uh, Michelle got the sequence, he cloned the two proteins, and then we found that uh, um, we, they were homologous. The thing is that then, this, as I said, was a side project, and then Michelle went to a meeting in uh, Osaka where he saw Tsuna Saido presenting a, a sequence of a protein that they had called non-amyloid plaque component. And it was very strange because actually the protein that they shown, the sequence, no, Michelle noticed that was exactly like the one that we had. But we had produced antibody and we never saw this protein in amyloid plaques or um, accumulating in Alzheimer's brain. So what we did was Michelle looked at the um, database and he found that actually these proteins that we had were almost homologous to two pro one protein described in Torpedo Californica in the electric fish uh, by Marteau and Scheller in Stanford in 1988. And then they called it synuclein because in the electric fish, they found it in the nucleus as well as in the synapse. So with, uh, we decided at the end to keep this name. And then Michel, that was the head of the lab, we decided to call this protein uh, synuclein, uh, the two protein, and then we call one alpha synuclein and the other beta synuclein. So this was uh, uh, similar. The sequence that we had, therefore, was one, what we call initially perfecting, because it was really working very well with any assay you were doing, became alpha synuclein, and imperfecting, which was not working so well, was instead similar to to uh, the protein identified by Nakajo, phosphoneuroprotein 14. And so that became beta synuclein. These two proteins, as I mentioned, they are very, very similar. They have a repeat region um, in the amino terminal part that is a sort of similar to apolipoproteins. So we know that bind to lipid membranes. And later on, G identified another protein known now as gamma synuclein, which was actually in the peripheral nervous system more than the central nervous system. And he identified it because it was associated with breast cancer. So more metastatic was the breast cancer, 
higher were the level of uh, this protein known as alpha synuclein. So this was the beginning of the synuclein. We, as I mentioned, we had antibodies uh, specific for the alpha, for the beta, for the C-terminus, the amino terminus, and so we used them and the characterization of the antibodies for immunohistochemists. And this was the staining that we could see in human brain, this puntate staining that were uh, characteristic of presynaptic terminals uh, staining. And interestingly, the alpha synuclein is one of the most abundant proteins in the brain. That's why I was working so well. It's 0.1% of the total protein content in the brain. And here, you see in the human brain, these are the fibers that from the substantia nigra go to the striatum. So we know at the beginning when we did this study that the alpha and beta synuclein is sort of a complementary distribution in that one is more in the stratum orients and the other in the stratum radiatum. But what happened is that, as I mentioned, we never saw amyloid plaques. We now know that actually that was due to a cross-reactivity of the antibody uh, done by Saito because he sent that we exchange antibody and we could also see with antibodies is this, this stain, but not with ours. And this instead was what we were always seeing. This in the Alzheimer's brain. And I was really intrigued by this. I thought it could have been the Golgi, could have been some other organelles. And then only later on it became clear that actually these were um, inclusions uh, in many um, cases of Parkinson's disease. So, we then localize the proteins in the, um, in, in the chromosome, the gene, and then we named the uh, gene for alpha synuclein SNCA, and that for beta synuclein SNCB. So we had this work done and became quite um, interested to start to investigate this protein that had been considered relevant in Alzheimer's disease initially. So we know that this protein, as I mentioned, binds the lipid membranes, is involved in synaptic vesicular redistribution, and then, as shown by um, Sriganga Chandra, it is also involved in the size and distribution of uh, synaptic terminals. When there is no synuclein, the synaptic terminals are very small. When there are triplication of the alpha synuclein gene, as found in a familiar form of Parkinson's disease or dementia of the body, you have much bigger uh, synaptic terminals. But still, we don't know what exactly the protein does besides being associated with the uh, presynaptic vesicles. And also, we don't know what is the conformation, because if you read the literature, people say that it perhaps is monomeric. Other people, like... Uh, uh, Selco, they say that is a tetrameric in nature, physiologically. And then you have the work of Sudov, who says that actually it is octameric in the, in the physiological form. And so it's just a wrapped again around the vesicle. And then Sriganga Chandra say that form a lattice about around the vesicle, and then um, it is involved in cluttering mediated endocytosis. So we don't really know exactly what alpha synuclein does besides this, and probably has many other functions. But what we know now is that it is involved in uh, Parkinson's disease. So Parkinson's disease, as you know, uh, is mainly characterized by movement disorder. This is the characteristic posture of a patient with Parkinson's disease. And it's characterized for what we know, rigidity, tre resting tremor, body kinesia, and postural instability. But all these features appear, actually, um, many years after the disease is going on. And the study done uh, by um, Andrew Lees and so on have shown that actually are the terminals of these cells that are located in the striatum, which one uh, that are the first to be disrupted. There is first disruption of uh, uh, the synaptic terminal in the striatum, the dopamine terminals, and then later on, when you have the symptoms already starting, when you reach about 50% of loss of dopaminergic cells in this brain area that is the substantia nigra, and you can see the name is due to the pigmented cells containing melanin. In the Parkinson brain, they are disappeared because they are dead. So at this stage, you have, the, um, you, you have really the movement problem. But before, the disease is going on for a very, very long time. And in the cells that are remained, this gentleman, Friedrich Levy, described in 1912 the presence of inclusions that are the Lewy body. They took the name after him. And that we know, he used eosin to characterize them. Elisia Forno showed that they were made of many filaments. 
that um, were arranged in the substantial agri in a circular way. So in 1996, Michael Polymeropoulos uh, published a paper, and it was the first paper showing some form of familiarity in Parkinson's disease. And this was uh, mapping a gene for Parkinson's disease in a very uh, large Italo-American family known as a Contursi family, and also in uh, five uh, families from uh, um, Greece. Now we know that actually the mutation, the um, there was uh, a link between Greece and, uh, um, and Greece and Italy um, at the time of the Romans and of the Greek. So when this came up, it was located exactly in the area of the chromosome 21 where the synuclein gene was, where we had mapped it. So the following year, Michael Polymeropoulos and Nussbaum published that actually the gene mutated, causing associated with Parkinson's disease, were the, was alpha synuclein and was a mutation known as A53T. So we had all the tools to try and determine if alpha synuclein was uh, present in uh, the Lewy body of a Parkinson's disease. And so with Michelle and Ross, we uh, start to um, stain, uh, obtain some brain section from the Cambridge Brain Bank from sporadic cases, but were very few because we were working on Parkinson's disease. And so uh, we, at that time, Michelle was collaborating with John and Trojanowski and Virginia Lee quite a lot. And then they sent us uh, tissue from dementia with Lewy body and Parkinson's disease. And we could confirm the staining that uh, actually alpha synuclein was present in the inclusions that are known as the Lewy body. And and then, however, we need to show that these inclusions, and this actually was one of the first and cells containing the body that I saw in the substantia nigra. And then, however, we had to prove that actually alpha synuclein was uh, uh, part of the filament that I've shown you before that were present in the body. So we extracted filaments, not only from Parkinson's disease, but also diseases where similar inclusions were described. So with dementia with the body, the uh, pure autonomic failure, and then diseases still with the eosinophilic inclusions like multiple system atrophy, and so we obtained the gliacetoplasmic inclusions. In all these cases, we obtained filaments that were decorated by antibody um, that recognize alpha synuclein. And the structure of this uh, decoration was very specific. Along the filament with the C-terminal antibody, only one tip with the N-terminal antibody, indicating that actually probably was not just a specific, non specific staining. And indeed, when we use a recombinant protein, we could form anti um, filaments exactly with the same type of uh, antigenicity. And because of this, then these diseases were known as uh, alpha synuclein. Then this use of alpha synuclein also allowed to find out that uh, there is a spreading of the protein in transplant uh, of in patients with Parkinson's disease, where the disease was treated, making transplant of uh, midbrain neurons, fetal neurons. And then in this case, some of the transplanted cells that were belonging to fetuses when transplanted, so they were like 15 years old when the patients died and could be investigated, they had inclusions that were alpha synuclein positive. And so what happened is that this presence indicated that actually alpha synuclein, like now we know many other proteins, they can spread from the one side of the brain to the other side of the brain, spreading the pathology. And this has given the possibility possibility to link the incidental Lewy body disease, where you have very few Lewy body around, with dementia with Lewy body, with in between Parkinson's disease. It is a spectrum of uh, diseases where very few Lewy body then spread to the substantia nigra and from there to the cortex and the hippocampus giving dementia with Lewy body. And in this way, you have many other diseases now recognized, characteristic of Parkinson's disease, before the motor symptoms, such as constipation, olfactory deficit, REM sleep disorder and depression and so on. So now that we knew this, what could we do? We decided to make transgenic mice in order to reproduce the characteristic aggregation of alpha synuclein to see if we could understand why it was toxic, what was the problem. And we used, with the work done with Tony Crowder, we had seen that actually these uh, um, 
If you truncated alpha-synuclein in the C-terminal part, the filaments were aggregated much, much faster. So we produce mice where we express as a transgene the truncated protein in order to have it aggregating faster. We had very nice, this, uh, in the null background, uh, we had very nice expression of the, of the transgenic protein that over time uh, start to accumulate, aggregate, leading to the degeneration of the processes. And what we saw that looking at this triatum where we had the projection from the substantia nigra, we had this sort of messy staining for synuclein and for synaptobremia of VAMP2. And initially we thought this could just be rubbish, but a clever uh, student in my lab, uh, Pablo Garcia Reitbock, he decided to go further and look at it. And it became clear that actually this is not rubbish. It's just a redistribution of the protein that are involved in exocytosis of a synaptic vesicle at the the synapse, and, uh, and that uh, alpha synuclein interacts with them, so they are part of the snare complex. And when we learned to look at the human brain, we found that in Parkinson's disease, very early uh, in uh, patients with very short duration, you find the same uh, pattern. However, um, in these mice, because uh, there is, but later on, when the disease is too advanced, you will not see anymore because everything is dead. So. We saw in these mice that there was a deficit, progressive deficit with age in the release of dopamine in this, in this triatum. We found also abnormal behavior at 18 months. But what we were really looking forward, besides the deficit here of dopamine, was the death of the cells in the substantia nigra. And we did not have that. We looked at the progression using STORM, in the progression, in the aggregation of alpha synuclein, and you can see the red here, in the mice at 18 months of age, they really had a lot, a lot of clumps containing alpha synuclein, with the redistribution in this case of bazoon, that is a marker of, a synapt of a synap presynaptic terminals. And this is uh, showing that the, the protein alpha synuclein is transgenic aggregated. So what we thought, the mechanism for us, at, uh, the initial mechanism, at least in Parkinson's disease, is that there is a release of neurotransmitters, but alpha synuclein at some point start to redistribute for some reason, which could be overexpression, like in the triplication of the gene that causes familial form of disease, or the A53T. And when this occurs, there is no release anymore. And then there is the deficit that we see in our mice at the level of the synapse. This leads slowly to the degeneration of the synaptic terminal. But then we continue, because as I mentioned, what we wanted was to to have the, uh, cell death, the, the cell death in the substantia nigra. So we, we kept making other mice under the same promoter, that is the tyrosine hydroxylase promoter, so specifically in the substantia nigra and dopaminergic neurons. And we can see here that there are a lot of small aggregates of alpha synuclein, but over time they become bigger and then they start to form clumps. And this is also monitored by storm at the level of the synaptic terminal in the striatum. And this is work done by Michael in the lab. So this uh, progressive aggregation of alpha synuclein is again also in this new model associated with this function at the level of uh, dopamine release. So you can see that at three months there is no difference in the release of dopamine measured by microdialysis in mice that are um, control mice or the, our transgenic mice. But at the age of six months our transgenic mice start to release less uh, dopamine in the striatum and then in nine months compared to controls we have a further deficit and at 12 months you can see that almost they do not react uh, to 40 millimolar potassium. So again we had a progressive loss of uh, uh, dopamine function at the level of the terminals. <laughs> we have a short time for questions from the audience. There's two microphones and there's Two questions right there. Hello, Claudio Gomes from the Faculty of Sciences, Lisbon. Great talk. I was just wondering if, uh, uh, regarding this NLA compound, if you looked at uh, if there would be a change in morphology of these aggregates uh, in vitro. Yes, we have. 
we have tested ANLE uh, also in uh, cell culture, where we have overexpressed the nuclei and then we have aggregates, and where we measure using one, uh, FM143 the deficit in the release, and when we treat the cells with ANLE, the release seems to be uh, is restored, and we don't see the clumps anymore of the protein. Hello. Uh, very nice. This is Rafael Fernandez Chacon from, from Seville. Uh, I wonder which kind of mechanisms do you envision uh, that connect the presynaptic degeneration triggered by the synuclein aggregation and the cell death? Uh, I, what, um, my impression is that when alpha synuclein starts to accumulate in the synapse, in our mice, of course, it is expressed in the TH neuron, so you have also a lot in the cell body. But probably in the disease, is, uh, the transport is inhibited. And uh, therefore, you have slowly an accumulation, not only in the synapse, but also in the cell body. And I know that some people say that uh, um, you can find Lewy body in incidental Lewy body disease, where uh, people have no symptomatology. But actually, in those diseases, you have very, very few aggregates in neurons in the substantia nigra. So it could be that those neurons are not sick enough or in sufficient amount to have a clinical phenotype. And therefore, I think that probably what happens is that through um, deficit in transport, and then, you know, when you form the first aggregates, you have reduction in degradation because the proteasome is inhibited, you have dysfunction in autophagy, and so it's a sort of a cascade event that leads to this accumulation in both. <laughs> 